Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to, well, it's part of our Chromaticraft tutorial series, but again, in this episode, we're taking a look at one application for one of our Chromaticraft items. So in the previous episode, we took a look at these lumen lamp controllers and the lumen lamps, and I sort of prototyped a system for using them with their RF charge level um, mode to create a power meter for a base, a big light up board that would show you how much power your base has. But in the previous episode, it wasn't quite working the way that I was hoping it would. When we used the immersive engineering capacitors, it, basically the entire board would light up while power was, char was running into it. And it was only once we cut that flow of power off that the lights would turn off down to the level of the capacitors that actually had power. However, after some tinkering, I've discovered, um, I pretty much figured this would be the case, that the Ender I.O. capacitors don't have this issue. I don't know if it's specifically the capacitors or a combination of them and the fact that I'm no longer using the uh, immersive engineering wire connectors, which actually have an internal power buffer, although I think that these do too, I'm not really sure though. What I do know is that this system works quite perfectly. So as you can see, this one here is about to completely fill up. And then um, power will pass into finally this uh, the first one in the line. And there we go. The, all the lights have lit up because we now have power in all of our capacitors. So let me walk you through this step by step, explain how it works, why it I think it works and how you can build it because I think it's really really uh, cool and a really useful um, aspect of these lumen lamp controllers. So the way this system works is that we have these basic capacitors from Ender IO but you could obviously use any size capacitor from Ender IO and I'm pretty sure you could stack these together you know to make them larger and it would still work properly because these are tileable don't forget these uh, capacitor blocks combine together to form larger capacitors. And we simply are putting power into this first one and then chaining the first one into the second, the second to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, fifth to the sixth, and sixth to the seventh. The only reason I have seven capacitors here is because I opted to have seven lights. Uh, two green, two yellow, two orange, and one red. Uh, you don't have to do that, obviously. Depending on the number of lights you want, you can have fewer capacitors um, in this chain. Or if you want more lights, you can have more capacitors in the chain. And we're now completely full up. So I'm going to break that pipe just so that there's no way for more power to come in here. And then we're going to put a uh, power drain on this side to see what happens. So the way that this works is that when you have these all chained together and you start putting power into the front of the chain, because here's the, here's the thing, power can only flow in one direction in this setup, both because of these emerald pipes and because we have each one of these set to push and pull, push and pull. I don't know if that's specifically necessary, but I did it. And so power can only ever flow from this side down to that side, okay? So you never have to worry about power backing up and screwing up your readings. As you put power into the front, the all the capacitors, including this one, end up with a tiny amount of charge in them, but no, zero RF per tick. You gotta go all the way to the end, and the very last one, fills first okay and I think that's important to um, to how this works because because the last one fills first this is the one that you want to set to channel one so in in my case channel one is the red light okay so whether you're doing the uh, the meter from left to right or from right to left or whether you're doing the meter vertically sorry a spider literally is crawled across my screen and just about gave me a flipping heart attack and I gotta get it off holy cow that scared the crap out of me you know it's like those avatars on YouTube where somebody puts a little bug in there to make you think of a bug on your screen there was literally a bug on my screen okay we're back so whatever or um, arrangement you decide to build this power meter in um, the very last capacitor from your power input has to be the channel of the the red light because the light uh, will turn on from the last to the first okay this capacitor fills first so it needs to be the bottom of your meter then this one fills and so on and once the first one is filled your power meter should be completely full because 
that means all of these are full and you have full battery bank charge in your base. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab the a vibrant capacitor because it'll easily be able to drain the entire, uh, all the charge we have in here. And um, hopefully this will work properly. I haven't actually tested it yet, but hopefully it'll just drain in the proper direction. So we'll place down a uh, emerald kinesis pipe in this case. Although you don't need an emerald one, especially for for these um, basic capacitors that only each hold a million. Definitely overkill, but you know, I I just set it up as such. Okay, so we're draining power into the vibrant capacitor. Now, just like um, I was hoping, the all the lights are still on. The very first capacitor is now draining. And we'll see that once this first capacitor gets completely empty, the green light goes off, uh, letting us know that one portion of our base is uh, storage has drained. So it's not going to take too long for this to drain. We can see the little meter on the side is running out, and Wayla is showing us that it's currently draining. Um, obviously, these basic capacitors have a pretty low in and out rate maximum, so takes a little bit for draining a million RF. But of course you could upgrade this system to Vibrant if you've got larger loads. Alright, now once that hits zero, the first light goes off. And then the RF per tick hits zero, and now the next one starts to drain. So this works perfectly. Now obviously you don't need to space these apart so much. I did that just to, um, you know, demonstrate so it would be easy to see how it was connected, but you can place these in all sorts of different um, organizations depending on you know how much space you have to fit it all although I don't think you want to connect them together because that, that would probably screw the whole thing up because the point is we want each one of these batteries to be uh, separated yeah so I think that that was a bit weird it kind of it did something yeah, connecting those together kind of screwed it up because now this one is, is draining weirdly. It's, it's, it's very odd, so don't do that. Make sure your capacitor banks are separate. There we go. It didn't it didn't mess up the um, meter, though. Even though these both started draining at the same time, it, it didn't actually mess up the power meter on the wall, which is really nice. So I think this is really cool. I think it has definite applications. I want to build this in the Rev3 world, but I wanted to show you how to build this. So assuming that you're playing in a mod pack that has Ender IO, Buildcraft, and Chromaticraft installed, then you could build a system like this. I haven't exhaustively tested to see if it'll work with other power pipes, other connectors, other systems, but I know for a fact that it works with Ender IO, and the Ender IO, IO things are not that expensive. Basic capacitors, you know, are not that expensive. Some redstone, some gold nuggets, some copper ingots. It's not, you know, these are cheap. It's not a huge expense until you get up to, like, these double layer capacitors and the energetic alloy. And so this is a system that you can build actually pretty uh, pretty early on. You're not going to be using emerald kinesis pipes or diamond kinesis pipes you're, uh, yet. You're probably going to be using the uh, the wooden ones and, and, and maybe gold once you get there. But the lumen lamp controllers and the lamps themselves are pretty cheap, and they, they um, appear early on in Chromaticraft. So this is something that you can build um, not very far into sort of a mod pack like Revolution. And uh, so it's definitely something that I want to build. And uh, we'll get it set up and it'll be sweet. So yeah, if you ever wanted a way to visually dis display your uh, current basis power level um, on the wall in a way that didn't involve things like maybe computer craft or or other sort of displays, but something easy, something, I don't know, would this count as analog or would this be considered digital? I have no idea. But um, if you ever wanted a way to do that, this is a way to do that. It's not that expensive. These lumen lamp controllers and the lamps themselves are pretty cheap. You might, you'll need a little bit of progression in Chromaticraft. Um, you'll need a, a decent number of uh, knowledge fragments, but it's not something that you will take you a, a really, really long time to get to. Uh, it's relatively early on. So, I'm glad that I finally got this system to work. I hope you've understood how to, uh, how to build it. Let's go ahead and, and just reattach this. See, now we have power coming into the system, and we have power going out. And the power meter is still working properly. Because all the power in those first batteries will still drain to this back battery. And now, it looks like 
more power is still going in, I mean, out of the system than going in. So the, it continues to drain. You see? Minus four, 500. Yeah, and so it works. And so as soon as we disconnect the, the power drain, then this will, there, that turned off, this will start to refill, and our power meter doesn't even jitter. It just keeps working. As long as there's a certain amount of power in this capacitor, whether it powers going in or going out, that will light will stay on. And none of the other lights will get screwed up either. These are kind of like bouncing a little bit. I don't know why, but it doesn't affect the board either. It's really nice. There's a little bit of leeway with this uh, when you use the immerse the Ender I/O capacitors, at least. Even when there's 1,000 RF in the in this capacitor, and in this capacitor, it doesn't trigger the lights. So yeah, really good, functional, and I think um, quite robust. So um, I hope that this has been interesting to you. Um, again, the reason that I'm producing this video today instead of a new bit from Commander Crafts because I'm really low on time. I had to go take a drug test today so I can get promoted for my job. So I hope you don't mind. I hope this was interesting enough to tide you over. And then next week, um, standard episodes of the Chromatic Craft tutorial series will continue. And um, we'll, we'll look at something new. So thank you so much for watching. Like and comment the video if you did enjoy it. Comment down below, especially if you have questions about the setup. And uh, if you try this setup and build it yourself, um, let me know how it worked out for you. If you build it using uh, different capacitors or different power connectors and it still works, totally let me know because I'd love to know what works and what doesn't. Um, I So far I know that the Ender I.O. works with the Buildcraft pipes and that the immersive engineering capacitors and wires don't work properly for this sort of uh, setup. So yeah, once again, thank you, thank you guys. Stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Sentinel H and I'm signing out.